Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hands of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. <coughs> This just in, Elon Musk has just fathered twins with Neuralink Director of Operations, Siobhan Zillis. The twins were born in November 2021, and this officially brings the world's richest man's number of living children to a whooping nine, although he has fathered 10 in total. On July 7th, 2022, Elon would tweet, Doing my bit to help the underpopulation crisis, a collapsing birth rate is the biggest danger civilization faces by far. Comedian Nick Cannon just welcomed his eighth child into the world with model slash girlfriend, I believe, Brie Teasy. She is one of five women who have fathered Nick's children. Three weeks ago, the comedian told Entertainment Today that it would be safe to bet that he is going to have at least three more children in 2022. And okay. you, you teased to us that more babies were on the way. You said the stork's on the way. The stork is on the way. Can we, how how many babies is the stork gonna drop off? That would take all the fun out of it. Oh. If I just gave you a number right now. If my over under was three. Okay. Like, would I be close? Safe to bet. You would be close. On three. You would be safe to bet on three in I, 2022. I would be safe to bet on three <laughs> in 2022. Yes. Okay. Jeffrey Epstein bragged for years to his posse of prominent scientific disciples that he intended to seed the human race with his DNA. He planned to use his 8,000 acre ranch in New Mexico called Zorro Ranch to impregnate at least 20 women at a time via insect. Epstein called himself and this transhumanism, and he was a prominent donor to the foundation, the transhumanist foundation, Humanity Plus, until his conviction in 2008. And what I would call all of this, based on my extensive reading around what is driving this trend, it would seem, in prominent rich men deciding to procreate with a number of women in order to see basically how many children they can have was perfectly put by a Rolling Stone article that I will link below called Breeding Kink. And this first came under my radar after watching a truly shocking Netflix documentary called Our Father, which details the true story of Dr. Donald Klein. Klein was a once adored fertility doctor in Indianapolis at the Indianapolis Fertility Clinic, Inc. In at least 94 cases, Klein substituted donor sperm or that of women's husbands and partners for his own without their knowledge or consent. He is to date the biological father of 94 children and counting. He faced little to basically no punishment for his actions because there was at the time no legislation in place preventing such a distortion, such an exploitation of ethics of medical ethics and standards. This breach, not just of medical ethics, but also of modern societal ethics, is a key characteristic of breeding kink. And the now notoriety of Elon Musk and Nick Cannon really got me thinking about breeder kink in the modern age, especially insofar as individuals such as Elon and Nick are heralded as real men as being great examples to aspiring fathers. Whereas when we see this in normal everyday situations, this is hardly ever seen as something positive or good. Mike, I understand the, yeah, I sort of get, though not condone, the irresponsible sex bit, right? I can sort of understand that. What I don't get is the irresponsible breeding bit. Why has one got to lead to the other in your case? Well, that's just the way I am. God says in the Bible, go forth and multiply. 
And so having these rich, exceptional men encouraging the likes of Mike H. Sr., a now well-known British father of 40 with 20 different women, begs the question, why is breeder kink suddenly in vogue? But just before I answer this question, I would like to leave you with some interesting quotations from our most well-known breeders. If people don't have more children, civilization is going to crumble. Mark my words, there are not enough people. I can't emphasize this enough. Low and rapidly declining birth rates are one of the biggest risks to civilization. I am having these kids on purpose. I don't have no accident. Trust me, there's a lot of people that I could have gotten pregnant that I didn't. The ones that got pregnant are the ones that were supposed to get pregnant. I'm like a seahorse out here. That's just the way I'm procreating. Think about it. You can't be like, no, I'm I'm done. Like, what if God says, no, you're not. I come from a big family. I have several siblings, being raised in an unorthodox family by my grandparents at times. I've experienced such a wide range of upbringing that I have such a love and passion for kids and family. I want a big family too. It's quite surreal to imagine that within the brief period of seven months, Nick Cannon had four children with three different women. It is just as surreal to imagine Jeffrey Epstein hosting luxurious buffet luncheons with the world's most well-known and well-respected scientists. These luncheons would be held at Harvard University's Program for Evolutionary Dynamics, a program which Epstein helped found with a generous donation totaling 6.5 million US dollars. Scientists whom Epstein had connections with prior to his 2008 conviction include the likes of Mary Gull Stephen Hawking, Stephen Jay Gold, Oliver Sacks, George M. Church, who is described as a molecular engineer who has worked to identify genes that could be altered to create superior humans, and Frank Filzek. Now, importantly, this isn't me saying that the likes of Elon or Nick are thinking in overtly or consciously eugenicist or spiritualist terms. What I am saying when I think of pop cultural references to individuals with incredibly large families based on the preposition that procreation is key, which includes Nick and Elon, and in the case as he wished, Jeffrey Epstein, is that they have something in common which is driving this breeder kink. At face value, it may appear to just be selfishness, but what the likes of Elon Musk, Nick Cannon, and Jeffrey Epstein have in common is that they have have or had a group of people, either the scientific community or a very strong Twitter base or public presence and image, that either reinforces, applauds or entertains their behaviour and views, even when such views or those expressing the views would not practice the kind of lifestyle that they seem to be in awe of. The scientists who congregated around Epstein were congregating and applauding him and yes manning him for their own self-interest. They were lured by the extraordinary funding and financial opportunities offered by Epstein. It was a viable and quick means for them to pursue their own pet projects, their own scientific intrigues, without having to think of the institution employing them. Some of the scientists said that the prospect of financing blinded them to the serious of Epstein's sexual transgressions and even led them to give credence to some of Mr. Epstein's half-baked scientific musings. I would say that the same definitely applies to Elon Musk, especially with his more outrageous pursuits and statements made most notably on Twitter. He has more money than any of us could ever fathom. Of course, people are going to entertain whatever he has to say. So the more religious you are, the less educated uh, and the poorer you are, the more kids you will have. And this is true across between countries and within countries. In, in the US, the highest birth rate is in Utah. I think if you're saying for what are threats to civilization, the, the lack of people is obviously a threat to civilization. We are going to face in the mid part of the century, a, and, and particularly the latter part of the century, a demographic implosion, the likes of which we haven't seen, including the Black Plague.
But then I think we also need to look beyond just the selfishness element and the posse of individuals surrounding and inflating that selfishness. Because class definitely seems to play a role in this. And I think when we see the likes of, at least in Britain, individual fathers or men who are incredibly charismatic but really don't have anything to offer, yet somehow seem to have had children galore, is what I I think is the inevitable and quite subtle religious aspect at the root of this breeder kink. And this inevitable religious root can be seen in a particular strand of Protestantism in the West, brought to the public imagination by none other than the exploitative tactics of the Lifestyle Channel, TLC. And as we start studying the Bible, and the Bible says that children are a blessing and a gift from God and a reward from Him, we just really felt like that we need to give this area of our life to God. We prayed, we said, Father, forgive us and give us a love for children like you love children. And we gave that area of our life to the Lord. And uh, right after that, God blessed us with twins and then another one and another one and another one and another one and before we knew it we had so many little ones and just two of us and and I think we began to go, oh my, what do we get into? Now, in the mid to late 1970s, a feminist turned evangelical Christian mother of nine called Mary Pride wrote a book which started a whole movement around the core tenets of her book. Her book is called The Way Home, Beyond Feminism, Back to Reality. And this book importantly gave a religious and also an ideological framework to Psalm 127. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hands of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. And this psalm speaks volumes to me, especially when looking at the statements made by our most prominent big daddies. Most notably, they shall not be ashamed. This particular ideology and religious strand are called Quiverful. The majority of Quiverful families are based in the United States and there are about 10,000 ever-growing Quiverful families, most of whom stem from Vision Forum Ministries, the most notable and notorious being the Duggar family. The majority of Quiverful families in the United States live in relative poverty when we consider that a they are patriarchal, meaning that only the head of the house, the father can go out and work and b the number of children that they have and intend to continue having. Let's just say that TLC is not a good representation of the lived experience of all quiverful families in the United States. The 10,000 or so which are not lucky enough to have an entire TLC program and production company around them. If we can call such exploitation luck. Why I mention the Quiverful movement alongside our ultra-rich breeder kinkers is because of an important characteristic which they have in common. Fear. There is a fear inherent of the Quiverful movement. The dooming and looming crisis of a decline in numbers of the faithful. Like Elon, the Quiverful see a crisis in their numbers on earth. There is a crisis in human numbers and therefore the only way to counteract this threat of extinction is via reproduction at a rapid rate. That is the only way to ensure the survival of of the human race. And this for me represents the religious undertones, the subtle, very subconscious religious undertones of modern breeding kinks. There is a fire and brimstone message in both the Quiverful movement and in the likes of tweets expressed by Elon Musk, as well as in statements made by Nick Cannon with reference to God's will being above that of Nick's own logic. And what I also find interesting is that 
the quiverful movement and the ultra rich as represented by Elon at least with regards to breeding kinks is that they are two sides of our socioeconomic spectrum. The quiverful movement are largely impoverished but breed and therefore become even more impoverished because this is deemed the only viable means to eventual salvation for the faithful. In the United Kingdom you have your equivalents in the likes of Mark H. Senior, a father of 40 and counting who made his television debut seven years ago. The ultra-rich or powerful like Elon Musk, Jeffrey Epstein, if he could have, and Nick Cannon do so because they believe in their DNA and an extension of themselves in time and space. It is like they are so rich and successful that the only way of extending their success in time and space is through spreading their seed as far and wide as possible. A kind of modern immortalization of themselves through procreation. And this is where I get onto the issues that are inherent of this breeding kink. And these are issues which I guarantee you Elon has not even considered possible. <laughs> I try to I spend as much time I as I can with them. Control. And I'm, I'm not going to say I'm 100% with my child because I'm not. Let's begin with the example of Elon in relation to his eldest daughter, Vivian Wilson. Vivian is transgender and in June of this year, she requested that her first and her last name be changed. And she gave the following insightful explanation as to this choice. Gender identity and the fact that I no longer live with or wish to be related to my biological father in any way, shape or form. In the UK, our equivalent to Judge Judy is Judge Rinder. And on Judge Rinder, he had a notorious guest who I have mentioned in this video already called Mike H. Senior. His son, Mike Jr., brought him to court and it went viral. You've said that over the years, he has contributed nothing to your upbringing. No, not as much as a bottle. Mike Senior, you tell me, how many children have you got in addition to Mike Junior, please? 40 and counting. Sorry? 40. 40 one four, 14. 4 0. Oh. 40 and counting. The majority of Mike Senior's 40 plus children are estranged from him, do not wish to see him, have received no financial or emotional support from him. Most of them are in foster care and the system. And in the words of Vivian Wilson, no longer wish to be in relation to their biological father in any shape or form. This example of Elon in relation to Vivian is very insightful and interesting because it shows that irrespective of how much money and time you may have. You cannot begin to even be a good father to a child when you have so many other children to look after, to care for. No amount of money will make you a good father. Another issue I find is when Elon says the following, a collapsing birth rate is the biggest danger civilization faces by far. With the statement, he is proving that science and socio-economic planning should be left to the experts and not to billionaires. As I said before with regards to Jeffrey Epstein, if Elon Musk didn't have the money that he has, such sentiments and thoughts would not even be remotely entertained or taken seriously. Because when Mike Senior says, God says in the Bible, go forth and multiply. The British population laughed. But when Elon says roughly the same thing, just without the religious sentiment at the base of it, people think that he is the man. The fact of the matter is that what Elon means to say, but wouldn't dare explicitly say, is that there is a collapsing birth rate in the rich world, and therefore a perceived danger within the rich world civilization. What Elon fails to appreciate is, well, a consequence of him being the figurehead of the 1% and his appreciation of this fact meaning that he is going against everything which that 1% stands for and believes to be true of the world which is that this world is fair and the reality and reason is as simple as this. 
People in the rich world are increasingly choosing not to have children because they can't. That is, they can't afford to, especially when, for the majority of parents or aspiring parents in the rich world, quality of life precedes anything equating to quantity of the life. Elon is proving how quality should always precede quantity. His quality of parenting will be judged above all else. And if one day humility trumps his ego, perhaps he will see that too. Voluntary childlessness in the West is in a complicated relationship with involuntary childlessness because the former is increasingly being influenced by the latter and vice versa when you consider money, modern expectations, jobs taking up a parent's time. Climate change is at the center of such fears, but also the rapid growth in socioeconomic inequalities since the early 1980s. This is accompanied by the growing cost of having and raising children, as well as the increasing likelihood that both parents will have to be in full-time employment if they want to have more than one child. And add on to that the precariousness of their children's future in a burning world. It is no coincidence that birth rates drop during periods of high temperatures in this part of the world. Importantly, Elon is the exception, not the rule. And by God, he should never be the rule. The thing with these individuals, specifically these men, is that they are living in a fantastical world of their own making. And this fantastical world is oftentimes a ethically ambiguous one. Elon, for instance, owns Neuralink Corporation, which his latest baby's mother is the director of. Neuralink is trying to establish a brain-computer interface and has undertones of cryonics in its vision for the future of humanity and improving our DNA. Epstein wanted to use Zorro Ranch to inseminate 20 women at a time with his DNA for humanity and the future. And what is frightening for the future of real life everyday human beings influenced by such ideas is that there are no laws in place keeping such ideologies or kinks in check. The Dr. Kleins of this world can get away with their actions. Elon is applauded for his very provocative tweets on such matters. Jeffrey became friends with prominent and credible scientists. I think what this shows is that there is a disconnect between money and morality, between money and doing the right thing, as well as between selfishness at the root of all of that and doing what is right for others. Because above all, the quality of life and well-being of children ought to be the most important thing in deciding to procreate, especially in a world that is looking more and more precarious for children and the future. Because the majority of children in this world who are born as a product of such breeding kinks are not being fathered by the likes of billionaires and multi-millionaires. And that, in my opinion, is the true crisis of civilization. Thank you so much for watching this very long kids clip. This was meant to be about 10 minutes long, but alas, I got carried away. So anyway, let me know what you think down below. Thank you very much for watching this kids clip and I'll see you very, very soon in the next one. <coughs>